distinguished participants, the session began in the morning, uh, good morning session, but my deliberation is now in the afternoon session. Uh, first of all, uh, I like to give you the warm greetings from the Bangladesh team that we have arrived two days ago due to this beautiful city, Johannesburg. And uh, I like to thank the organizers for giving me the opportunity to share with you about the experience that we have about helping babies breathe in Bangladesh. And we all know that these simple but effective resuscitation skill can save many lives who are born asphyxiated. And we have some experience in Bangladesh that I am going to share with you right now. Uh, I will share with you about the background, the National Club strategy, evaluation design, results to date, quality improvement process, plans for sustainability, and the lessons that we have learned till now. In the background, uh, here it's not being mentioned, we have 160 million population in a very small land area of Bangladesh, where the delivery at facility is still quite meager, it's hanging around 29%, and the delivery is attended by a skilled birth provider is 32%. The neonatal death has come down to 79,000 uh, eight, 700 actually, and the decline is quite fast in last one decade. And the now neonatal mortality rate now stands at 32 per thousand live birth. And unlike that of the global figures of 44%, the neonatal death actually contributes 60% of under five death in Bangladesh. The picture is uh, more or less same uh, similar to this region and also in the countries in the South Asia. And uh, most of the deaths are actually occurring due to preterm and its complications. Severe infection is another major cause of death and intrapartum related cause, particularly birth asphyxia, is a major cause of death in Bangladesh. Now, in 2010, we had a Helping Babies Breathe pilot study, and that was conducted by the medical university from where I belong, that is Bangabundu Sheikh Mujib Medical University. And the pilot study ended very well, and when we made a dissemination meeting where the health, Honorable Health Minister, Health Secretary, and all the development partners were there, at the academy were there, and the, the finding was so much so impressive that the, uh, one of the main stakeholders is our health ministry. And the minister himself, as you see in the picture, was seeing the mannequin. And he, has, um, he, he actually saw the effectiveness of this helping baby's brain. And then he said that we cannot remain within the uh, dissemination of this helping baby's brain pilot study this needs to be scaled up in the country. So he said he made a commitment from his ministry and then asked the other development partners to help in this regard. In order to make a scale up plan, you know, there are series of workshop and meetings with different stakeholders. And then we had this final, the project submitted to the government. Then there was adaptation, because we thought that it cannot be a vertical program, rather it should be nested within the essential newborn care program. So essential newborn care is incorporated into this training program, and the, the, particularly the flip charts and the manuals have been translated into Bangla on our own uh, language. We had three areas of focus in national scale up plan, that is capacity building, quality assurance, and the sustainability. And we looked into these areas very carefully. In April 2011, this uh, uh, Helping Babies Breathe project was actually incorporated into the uh, 
Health Population Nutrition Sector Development Program, and that's called PIP Project Implementation Plan. It has been incorporated very successfully, and that was a key to the success up until now. And then this was taken into the operation plans in the government normal mainstream uh, health service. There are a good partnership in Bangladesh regarding this. Ministry of Health and Family Welfare having two director general, family planning and health service. MCHIP, Save the Children, are a big donor and supporting agency. Bangalore Sheikh Mujib Medical University was given the task to carry on the training of the trainers. UNICEF, ICDDRB are there. And if we look into the funding arrangement, Minister of Health and uh, Family Welfare is there, USAID through MCHIP and Save the Children, UNICEF and Ledal Foundation, particularly Tor, Tor Ledal, visited Bangladesh on two occasions. We had actually planned for total 11 steps, and each step actually tried to cover six districts. And we had TOT, training of the trainers, and they are the doctors from medical college hospitals, district hospital, district health and family planning office, and Upajala Health Complex. And in each step, there were seven to eight batches, and two days of training of trainers was conducted in my medical university. And the trainers, when they were trained, soon after their uh, return, they started giving training to others and also the skilled birth attendants at the Opojela level. So it is a cascaded training program, the Georgian mentioned right now. Otherwise, I mean, it, it cannot be a successful one. Uh, training starts immediately after taught, as I said. Medical college, we had 30 doctors and 40 nurses being trained. District hospitals, six to eight doctors and 10 nurses. In uh, maternity, child welfare center, all uh, doctors and female welfare visitors, Upajal Health Complex, five to seven medical officers and all nurses, and all female welfare visitors and community skill birth attendants. We also have a evaluation uh, 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 plan and system, which is being done independently by ICDRB. And what they are trying to look at, actually, they are trying to look at the, I mean, two components. One is quality and the other is coverage. In terms of quality, uh, they are looking at the logistics, whether they are in place, and about the skill, whether the service providers who have been trained, whether they can apply that skill and whether they have retained their skill. The other thing is about the timely availability. Those babies who are born as fixated, whether these trained personnel could, could arrive there in time and could give resuscitation when it was needed. And also the number uh, being trained in order to see the coverage. And finally, in order to see the effective newborn resuscitation. Well, they are not looking at the uh, newborn deaths and efficacy because these are actually proven. The results to date, we have actually, uh, we have mapped Bangladesh. We have 64 districts. And uh, up until now, you have seen that the only the white uh, districts are not being covered, but the other districts are covered in phases in different colors. And we have seen the received, the training that, uh, that was offered, the number of doctors are 3,570 nurses, paramedics, and CSBA, and uh, they are more or less 25% in each group. The training equipment, equipment, uh, equipment is the mannequin and, uh, that is being used for training and also for uh, refreshers training. And they are kept in all facilities from Upajila Health Complex and upward. And the resuscitation and suction uh, device that you have seen here, and these are there being provided to all the facilities. The mannequin are there in all facilities, but the bag and mask to all the facilities plus the trainees that is particularly skilled bath attendants who were trained were given the bag and mask. Uh, the uh, flip chart, the poster, the manuals, these are all given to a relevant group of people. Now, I will share with you about the uh, 
incorporation of helping babies breathe protocol in different curriculum. And as you know, that if it is not being incorporated, this is not going to be uh, sustainable. So therefore, uh, in pre-service and in-service curriculum, and the following curriculum already incorporated the HBB protocol are MBBS, that is the graduation, graduation degree, the diploma and degree courses in nursing, midwifery training curriculum, female welfare vis uh, visitor training curriculum, private pra paramedics training curriculum, and community skill birth attendant training. All this training curriculum they have incorporated HBB that I think is a great success in our country. And also, we, if it is not incorporated in the SOP, then also there is a hindrance. So therefore, the incorporation of this in the standard operation procedure for newborn health care in primary and secondary level facilities and in the process of incorporation in the maternal health uh, SOP, because in Bangladesh, you all know that the maternal health strategy guideline and SOP is under the process of development. Regarding the quality improvement, which is crucial for, any, uh, for the success of any kind of program, uh, we have looked into it very carefully. And at the national level, there are people from Director General of Health Services, Family Planning, My Medical University, and Save the Children. And it's a joint monitoring visit and follow-up of divisional official visit. At the divisional level, usually one district per division in each phase, so feasible for divisional level to organize monitoring visits. District health and family planning officials visit each batch as a resource person. UHFPO, UFPO, RMO coordinate the training of their upojala and facilities. And all these uh, programs that has been listed in the second last bullet, they are actually uh, providing support for supervision and supervise the project area. And there is a standard checklist used for supervision and monitoring. Regarding the quality improvement, the figure that we have right now in our hand, that we actually plan that 90% of stations are expected to be supervised, monitored by district level, that is from DGHS and DG family planning officials. And so far we have seen that 83% stations observed uh, by district level health and family planning managers. 50% of sessions will be monitored, supervised by our own medical university, and that has been divided into two factions. One is monitoring visits from the, with the checklist from my medical university is about 28%, and quality assurance through district observation of master trainers is around 20%. Now, quality improvement also needs refreshers training. We have seen that the skill is being retained by the bottom level, that is community skill, birth attendance, up to four months is good. After that, it declines. So therefore, we thought that refreshers training is important. And again, the, if the refreshers training is included in the mainstream service, that is, we have in our country monthly meeting of these uh, healthcare providers. And in the monthly meeting, they will have the chance to, uh, I mean, go for hand, um, hands-on, uh, bag and mask skill on the mannequin. We have the plan for sustainability because we know that it, it has to be there on board all the time. And Helping Babies Breed program incorporated in the health population nutrition <coughs> sector program. That is very, very crucial. And that, that's five years program from 2011 to 2016. And also this has been incorporated into the operation plans of the MNCNH uh, and also Maternal Child Report at Kibana Health Program of DGFP. Curriculums and newborn SOP incorporated the protocol. That's another achievement. Refreshers training introduced through routine system, as I just mentioned, monthly meeting. And MIS incorporation under the process, this is also crucial. And a technical subcommittee on finalization of new one indicator have been formed and are working in the uh, uh, Director General of Health Services. And in the Director General of Family Planning, uh, now piloting these HBB-related indicators. And surveillance activities are also being planned. The lessons that we have learned so far, that rapid scaling up of a public health intervention became possible due to, and you have also seen uh, that uh, from the presentation of Georgina, that political commitment is very crucial. Our ministry, health ministry, is very positive about it. 
from the very beginning and they are with this program. There is systematic, a systemic cascade approach. Uh, that means any training uh, being offered, the trainers went back and started giving training. Technical capacity, partnership that you have seen in my previous slide, that there are a very good partnership with the government, with the academia, with the development partners and NGOs. And unlike that of the presentation of Georgina, fund availability up until now is not a problem in Bangladesh. Still the challenges of HBB, the scale up is retention of a skill. I think all of you will agree that any skill needs to be retained and for that we need to have refreshers training. Monitoring of implementation and outcome and linking with routine system is also a challenge. And cleaning of the equipment, we, have, we, we thought that it's a, it's, a, it's a challenge. So we are looking into it that the equipments are being cleaned at the facility time to time. This is my last slide where I will share with you the experience, I mean, just a couple of stories and one story that the family that we have happy, who had an asphyxiated baby, whose life was salvaged by with this simple, effective uh, skill of helping babies breathe. And they are giving thanks to all the partners who supported us, that is USAID, UNICEF, WHO, American Academy of Pediatrics, Laidl Foundation, government, and everybody. With this, I want to end here my presentation. Thank you very much.